Hello, Leanne in Adelaide, back with the tour of the garden. So this is a garden that's not quite two years old. You saw an earlier version and when it was about a year old. So back again to show you the growth. So along here, we need a little bit of privacy overlooked by next door there. So I've planted some uh, Nepalese blue bamboo and that's going to eventually cover that area. It's in a wind tunnel because there's a driveway alongside of us basically the wind tunnels down there and really hose into the plants so eventually they'll get strong and big enough to be able to handle that but they're suffering a little bit you can see some brown leaves there not much sun here Nepalese blue don't like a lot of sun so that works out pretty well but they are struggling a bit but they'll get there they don't grow as fast as some of the other bamboos so we're just going to accept that that'll take a little bit longer so this one here right here is the last of the Nepalese blue and then from this one onwards and you can see the huge columns we're putting out that's all uh, Textus uh, gracilis and that is a very small footprint but nice and tall and a lot quicker growing so from that point of view you can see that it's really created a really good privacy screen you can hardly see anything of the neighbours there if you look back over here like we've got house overlooking us over there but once you move into the yard you really can't see much of that at all. In the first video we showed the um, bamboo against the carport of our neighbours there and really there was hardly any greenery there at all. Now you can see it's growing above the height of the gutter there. This bamboo has also, um, bamboo, this banana palm has also grown a lot. It is about, I guess about four to five metres tall and it's only um, 18 months old. A lot of water and fertiliser has helped that to grow. There's a pawpaw there that was planted a while back and in the first video it was tiny 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 we had to have a um, metal uh, grate over it to protect it because it was going to get stepped on quite easily and destroyed and then scrolling down here we, there's a bamboo here that's called Alphonse Carr that was transplanted from a pot it was outgrowing the pot and we put it in the garden. We've got a cactus here. And a bit of a climber there. Ipomoea is growing down here. That's lovely. I uh, only bought three plants. I've already started to pick out pieces and transplant them in the yard. Just the lime green foliage is wonderful. It, doesn't um, intrude on other plants, it just sits on the top, very shallow roots, it puts out a few corms to protect itself and over winter it dies back a bit but then it'll come back with a vengeance. So it's actually related to the sweet potato. Now I was going to give you all the names of the canners in my video but what I'll do is I'll provide the description in the um, description of the video. So here we've got Pretoria or Bengal Tiger as it's called. No flowers on there but they have an orange flower and um, there's an, one, another one over in the other section of the yard that you'll see the flower, flower colour. I will give some names out but 
not all of them, I can't recall all of them. This one is called Marie Nagel and that's a really lovely red. The hotter it gets, the more orangey red it gets. So because we've had a few cool days here, where when I say cool, like uh, under 30, it's gone a little bit more red. But when it gets really hot, like 35 plus, it goes orangey red. It's a quite a distinct colour change on that. So you can see in Alocasia, elephant sears in the corner. Um, that was part of a um, project that we did. So if you want to have a look at that project, we removed two alocasias from the balcony. That's a small one. And that was in Leanne's garden projects number one. So if you can have a look at that video and see how we did all that. And this is another canna lily. That one has an, uh, a really pinky um, cerise colour to it. Down here we've got Dracaena marginata, I think it's called marginata. That was a present, a housewarming present from friends in a small pot and we grew it in a bigger pot eventually. It still didn't do well and we put it in the garden. It's done really well there. It looks quite healthy but not growing very tall. Just sat there but the the foliage is really um, freshened up and looks great. So this area is pretty much a, a canna bed. Not very, very many flowers at the moment. Um, we had a really hot spell and they all kind of go a bit dormant for a while there. And unless you give them a, a huge amount of water, they'll tend to be very shy with their flowering for a while. So this one here is called Lucifer. So you've got that golden edge with the bright red around it. And there's another one over here that's nearly finished flowering. We also planted some golden cane palms. So with the first video that I took, it was um, a Mediterranean meets tropical and since then we've decided that we really wanted to make this a full-on tropical style garden. So a lot of the Mediterranean style plants have been taken out. That's a new addition that's only been put in probably two months ago. That will end up being down the track, um, two to three metres tall in our climate. We're still Mediterranean climate, so we're never going to get that really huge tropical lush look. And that's a large alocasia. Again, go back to Leanne's pro garden projects number one, and you'll see how we actually got that from a self watering pot upstairs on our balcony down to our garden and transplanted it. So it's doing quite well, a little bit of leaf damage um, in the trip, but overall not too bad. In front of the water feature, some roia, or the common name is Moses in the Cradle. So the plan, and we'll probably do a garden project video update down the track, is instead of having these vinkers along the side there, as you can see, those flowers there, the pink and white and so on, and also the other side. So the plan is to, to once they finish flowering later on, uh, maybe around April, just take them out regardless and extend the Moses in the cradle across through that area just to give it a bit more uniformity and also take it around the sides. You can see a little bit around the side of the water feature there but maybe extend it out so it's a lot wider. So where that gap is we're pretty much going to fill that and again on the other side we'll do the same. So it just gives a really good bulk um, area there where, where it's completely planted with that same feature and it just goes in really well with that water feature. It has that tropical look about it but they're relatively drought hardy. 
they get through winters here okay. We don't have frost, we get cold weather. It gets down to maybe three or four degrees, but we don't have the frost. We've got, um, we're not that far from the sea. We're about 100 metres or so from the sea and we don't have any views. But And then on the other side uh, of us, um, we've got a lake which is uh, fed by seawater. So the occasional um, Mediterranean influence is still here around the banana palm. Nothing much will grow, even those um, succulents, the aeoniums are struggling to grow there, but at least it's something. I've taken out the uh, other plants that we had that were more Mediterranean, so the the Chinese lantern, we have quite a few planted there. We had lots of buddleias. I was hoping to get butterflies into the garden and okay occasionally I saw some but very rarely um, I saw a few monarchs come through but it's so rare that I think it was just too hard. Um, the butterflies probably need a corridor of good gardening. We only had one neighbour that had a garden that was butterfly friendly and the rest around here is very concrete and tiny little courtyards and just not conducive to all of that. So you can see here, that's an eye familiar that I just took as cutting off the larger section earlier and just shoved it into the ground literally, just threw some soil on top of it and it eventually just grows, it, it's fantastic. So what I love about Ipamea is that it's so versatile and it doesn't take away from the growth of other plants because it has shallow roots and it, and occasionally it will produce a corn when it gets more mature. But look at this, like this is what I really love. That colour combination, the dark with the light. The lime green it's just fantastic it really is fantastic so I just throw a bit more of that around the garden down the track so standing back to show you the growth here you can see that banana palm 18 months old it's quite big so a bit of cow manure and water gets it going we also had the issue with the slatted um, fence and gate there with the neighbours and got the bamboo growing quite well there, covering quite a lot. You really can't see that much through there. We've got a, a bird bath here and seriously that's got to be about the fourth location we've put it in. The birds don't seem to be able to find the bird bath. We've had it in a few locations and just not working that well. It's because our garden, like it's quite, the fences are quite tall on some areas. So for birds to be able to see something like that, if they're coming in, like we're talking about quite a few meters. So whether they even see the bird bath, who knows? So this is the last location. We're gonna just test it here. The idea behind this one, this location, is that we can actually see it from the kitchen. So if we're, you know, preparing meals or whatever, we might be able to see a bird using the bird bath. Try and keep it re reasonably clean. We'll see what happens. So you can see more Ipamea down here. That was the original one we put in quite a while ago, and that was in the first video we took. And it's just grown and grown and grown. I can't remember if we put in two or three plants, but as you can see, quite a lot of growth. And then further in, there's the lime green one coming through. So the combination of the lime green with the meeting the, the dark purple will look really great. In the first video we took, the tiger grass was tiny. Like, uh, it's now roughly two metres tall, which is not bad for a Mediterranean climate. In tropical climates, it'll probably be three to four metres tall. But here it's very dry. Um, and it gets super hot so every now and then you get leaves that are just burnt off so I try to keep that fairly tidy cutting them off you can see a few brown ones there that I haven't cut off
but the really bad ones are cut off because it it just when you get weather that's that hot it can't most plants can't handle it over here lily peas you can see that we've got that privacy issue with the neighbors So you can see the tiger grass has grown a lot. We had Bangalo palms in when I made the last video back over just over a year ago. They've grown a bit. Uh, that one's not too bad, but there's one back further. And bearing in mind that we don't have a really tropical climate at all. I'm creating a tropical style garden, but we are in a Mediterranean climate gets very hot in summer, well over 40 degrees on multiple days. Uh, so that's like 115 or so Fahrenheit. So we've got one palm there that's actually growing quite tall. That's the tallest one of the lot. The lily pillies, the, they were tiny, or about half, uh, less than half that size. When I did the first video, they're growing really well. I've got this gap here where we've got the fence there, and I had put in a couple of plants, and really a bit disappointing to be honest. Going to give them a little bit longer, and if they don't start coming on, I think I'm going to just dig them out and put in some more lily pillies. So I'll take a while but they'll end up catching up with the other ones there so we've got that one there and uh, I can't recall what that one is it's meant to be like a um, quite a thin but tall upright plant over here that's Grevillea Grevillea is an Australian native that one has always suffered a little bit from the excess sun and dryness and really struggling to, to get going so we'll have to see how that goes in the next few months and may have to pull that out and just put more of those lovely lily pillies in as, as you can see. So I've got cannas all around the garden you can see there we've got that Bengal tiger the leaves are lovely, we just love it. Got one here and then again we've got them scattered around the garden with the orange flowers. Now that one, I'll put the name of that in the description down below. All of my canners are got from one place, it's called Oak Bank Plants, it's on eBay. Uh, and they are in Adelaide, or they're in the Adelaide Hills area in Adelaide. So along here you can see more of those Moses in the cradle, Roia. Some of them looking a little bit on the dry side, especially along the front here. I bought 25 plants and they were absolutely tiny with basically almost no roots or like two, one or two tiny roots. And since that was um, a year and a half ago and since then that's created all of that area and that area in front of the water feature so not not bad value really I think the whole lot cost me um, $50 and considering how much has grown since then it's pretty pretty good you can see more of here we've got a few newer bangalow palms they take a while to get settled in, especially in our hot weather here. It's very dry and hot. have to try and feed them water. So that, that one over here, that's a golden cane palm. This one here's the bangalow. And so is that one. So over here we've got another canna that has quite different colouring with the leaves. One of my projects down the track, I'm looking to put that canna over towards a water feature with the stripy leaves, I think it would go really well with this one here. 
So I've already got heaps of those in the garden, so I'm going to combine the two here because I think the colour combination with the stripy leaves will go really well. Down here we've got a dwarf one. That only grows to about a metre tall, but it's got lovely pink flowers and like normally candles are really bright coloured, but that one's more of a subdued, uh, cottagey look almost. We've got dotted around a few chilli plants, we just shoved them in here and there, hoping they'll go okay. The, most of the chilies are in the self-watering pots over near the Alfresco area. I've still got the my hibiscus plant as an experiment where I'm trying to see if I can get a like a lollipop effect, like a um, standard so I've got two of them there really not sure how they're going being a bit slow um, hibiscus theoretically should do okay in this garden but they are just very slow so down the track maybe I might keep one of them I'm going to keep growing as high as I can keep removing as you can see you get a little bit of growth on the stalk so you just remove it as you go down, so we'll see what happens with that one. Again, more canners. They've finished flowering, but they were fantastic, you know, really bright yellow flowers. They go through phases where you just get leaves for a while, and then they re regroup and they put out their flowers again. So that's the colour of the flower. Nice, lovely colour. Just going to pull this out, They're nice and bright, clean colours. So overall I'm pretty pleased with how it's all going. It's uh, not quite two years old. Um, we moved in uh, just under two years ago and we didn't actually start planting until later than that, so really more like 18 months to two years old. And some of the growth has been for the soil what we've got. It's been pretty amazing actually, as you can see by that. Got a few more projects in mind. I'll be posting the projects on the web my YouTube.